happened. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. To Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Hey, man. <laughs> yeah. See, you got to love the bunker cam, right? You got to love the bunker cam because you can see what I'm doing now. I'm texting. That's why I'm late. How you doing? Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses. Uh, Yeah, man, today's Tuesday, May 16th, 135 days into the new year, just 230 days left. We are live from a bunker right here in downtown Burbank, California. And I want to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States, hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west. North and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black. For KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KTRA, the planet. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. What is cracking, everybody? Big Tuesday to you. Great night tonight on the show. Yes, we have Corey Good is going to be here. A very special broadcast and conversation for unity in the community. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. We've got a couple of uh, big announcements that we're going to do. Very uh, excited about that. And I'll leave that to Corey. Tomorrow night is a special fader night. That's right. We're going to do it tomorrow night with a few drive-bys from our friends stopping by tomorrow night. It's going to be a great night, so get ready for that. Thursday night. We're taking off because we're going to be hanging out with all of you fader knots at the Joshua Tree Saloon in Joshua Tree, California, getting ready for contact in the desert. All right. Ah, man, let's get this show going. Uh, Follow follow me right now on Twitter at J Church Radio. That's what you want to do at J Church Radio. Hashtag F2B is the sandbox. Hashtag F2BQ is the The questions, any questions or comments during the show tonight, just post them right there. You can also email throughout the show, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Simple enough. You remember email, don't you? Jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. And I announced this last night, but I want to do it again tonight because it's so very, very, very cool. Peter Lavenda will be a contact in the desert. Jim Mars is having some health issues, and our thoughts are with him. I did a... Uh, Place a call to Jim tonight. I'm going to see if uh, we can get him tomorrow uh, to do a little drive-by on uh, Fader Night to say hello to everybody and see how he's feeling. But Peter stepped in and stepped up to fill some very big shoes, and he's going to, uh, you know, slide into Jim's uh, uh, speaking uh, times there at Contact in the Desert and do some presentations and, and also sit in with me on our panel. Okay. So there you go. Peter Lavenda is going to be a contact in the desert. Really, really looking forward to that. And uh, so I want to remind everybody a couple of things before we get to the show. Subscribe to our podcast. Uh, The podcast and the membership area are two separate things. Two separate. They're separate. They're not the same. Separate. We have our podcast uh, with our podcast partner, Libsyn. Yes, we have apps and everything. That's the podcast, and that includes the commercials. It's just a a replay of the show. <laughs> I'm going to show everybody. Just got a text from Corey. <laughs> 
Corey, you are too funny, man. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do this right now. I just want to say. Uh, there you go. There you go. I just gave Corey a a hard time for not uh, following me. He just followed me. There you go. All right. Um, where am I? Okay. So the podcast and the membership are two different things. Podcast, you it's two dollars a month. You get commercials. It's a replay of the show tonight, which gets uploaded uh, immediately after the show. And then there you go. So it's a podcast of the show. It's called a podcast. In our membership area, we have downloads. And the downloads, which is not a podcast, the downloads are downloads. Commercial free, edited, and and everything for you because you're a member, so you get to listen to the shows commercial free. You download those shows. We don't have an app. It's not a podcast. Podcast is a whole nother animal. We allow you as members access to our audio files commercial free that you can download. So you can download them onto your phone, your iPad, your uh, a, a USB drive. Pop it in your car. Uh, computer, you don't have to uh, worry about internet time or being, that's what that is for. Two separate things, separate things. Will we develop an app for the membership area? Difficult to do, but we are talking uh, to some app uh, uh, designers uh, to handle that, but it's a very difficult thing. It's it's It sounds easy and it's just not. So we are looking into that. But in the meantime, just downloading the files. It's uh, that simple. <laughs> Getting more text. All right. So there you go. Go to our membership area. Uh, when you become a member and you become a fade or not, uh, each month you get a bunch of different things. And one of the things that is really cool is we have a drawing every single month. A couple of months ago, we gave it away Taskcam Digital Recorder. Last month, we gave away, uh, did a drawing for uh, a Studio Dome. A stereo system, a Bluetooth stereo system. This month we're doing a coffee bar, right, with Fade to Black Blend, uh, courtesy of River Moon Coffee, with all the hardware and software that you need for that perfect cup of coffee. That's what we're doing this month. So go to our membership area, register up, make it happen, get it done. All right? It's that simple. Check out all of our sponsors, by the way, which Life Change Tea, Get the Tea.com, River Moon Coffee, Studio Dome Speakers. Next month, we're going to be doing a Life Change Tea drawing, right, with the package from Life Change Tea. So there you go. Become a member and support the show through all of our sponsors. Um, as we have been announcing for the last couple of months, we do it every night on the show because, because it is the biggest event of the year. But certainly for UFOs and ufology and conspiracy uh, is contact in the desert. It is this weekend uh, kicks off Friday, May 19th through the 22nd in Joshua Tree, California. Go to contact in the dot com. Look at the schedule. You will flip out. Look at the schedule and look how it is laid out. You can see if you don't want to see there are that somebody is speaking Every minute of the day, all day, and all night long. It, so there is something going on for three straight days. Actually, four. It, it goes into Monday. So go uh, th go there now and check out the schedule. It's absolutely incredible. Yes, we're doing three events. We're going to broadcast Friday night. Saturday, I'll be hosting a panel, the Forbidden Archaeology panel. Saturday, I'm going to uh, 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 host the Disclosure panel on Sunday night. Those are both in the amphitheater at 7 p.m. So uh, go. It, it is the biggest event of the year. River Moon Coffee is going to be there. They're going to have a booth serving Fade to Black Blend. Uh, we're going to have our little things that we're going to be doing all weekend. We've got some special T-shirts that uh, we printed up. Oh, I didn't bring the uh, uh, the T-shirts to the bunker. Oh. All right, I'll have them tomorrow night on the show. I forgot. They are not in the bunker. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, anyway, the T-shirts look amazing. And uh, there you go. Okay. That's that. Next up, uh, Fade to Black will be up at I Will and Rita. will be going to the ESETI Ranch for their July 4th conference. It's called the Science, Spirit, and World Transformation Conference. Tickets and info over at ESETI.org. Now, right now, for you Fader Knots, use the promo code 
fade to black with the number two in it. Well, I'm sure it's up here in Twitter already. I'm looking at it here. There it is. Thank you. Let me retweet. Um, okay. Uh, East City Ranch, the promo code is F or fade to the number two black. You're going to get 10% off of the link. Okay. So, uh, that link is coming up now and Rita's just tweeted it. There you go. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to do this in real time. Promo code. You got to love this promo code fade to black. There you go. All right. I just tweeted it out. We'll, we'll, I'll do something a little bit more complete later, but there you go. Okay. So we're going to be up there. Um, all of the speakers are listed. I am going to be speaking twice. I'm going to, you know, goof around and MC if they'll let me, you know, it's hard for me to resist a stage and a microphone, but, uh, it's the events at night with James Gilliland night vision and just watching also Bigfoot. There's interdimensional things that I cannot wait to get to ESETI. It is a bucket list situation for myself and Rita. And please come and join us up at ESETI Ranch. Okay, so we've got the links up. Go and check it out. Very exciting. And uh, now we just confirmed something else. I will wait for Corey uh, to come on the show. We will announce that in just a bit, too, as well. With that, let's get this show cracking. Ah, happy birthday to Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, today he's 64. And, yeah, I love me some Pierce Brosnan. Dude is out of his mind. What was the name? Well, where he was the serial killer. What was that thing called? That was a good movie. Danny Trejo, our neighbor, is 73 years old. Can you believe it? He's got Trejo's Tacos now in Hollywood. And rumor has it, I hear about it all the time, supposed to be the best tacos in L.A., and I don't doubt it. Danny Trejo, the machete, today is 73. Also, Chris Novoselic today is 52. Uh, on this day in history, 1929, it was the first Academy Awards ceremony, but they did it at a dinner party for about 250 people at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood, California, on this day in 1929. Also, fader fact. You ready? Are you writing this down? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? Are you ready? A group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. I bet you didn't know that, did you? There you go. Our uh, little puppy that we just got, uh, Teddy, he's got two sets of flamingo legs on a puppy body. He looks like one of those Star Walker things in Star Wars. Dude's legs are like three feet long. And he's only this big. He's, uh, you know, he's a couple of pounds. And his feet are a foot. His legs are foot. <laughs> he's a freak of nature, that, fr that, that Teddy. All right. Tonight, our guest is Corey Good. He's here. We're going to have a very open-ended conversation tonight about unity in the community. Tomorrow night, Fader night. Thursday night, we're taking off. Friday night, we'll be broadcasting live from Contact in the Desert. All right. Now, you know, today, today is a, is a special day for us. Today, seven years ago, today, on May 16th, 2010, Ronnie James Dio uh, left this earth. And yes, he was a friend, and there, there's that part of it. Um, last year, I, I listened to Ronnie Dio all day long on May 16th in, in the bunker, and it, it just it kind of bummed me out. I had it cranked, man. You got to listen to that stuff loud. But uh, I didn't do that today. But uh, but his music, his bands, his voice were the greatest. There's no question about it. Seriously, Ronnie, here's to you, brother. Now, I want to say this about Ronnie. And he was a rock star. He was a lead singer. But uh, he was also very cool, which is rare in the music industry, um, his level of coolness. And anybody that knew him knows exactly what I'm talking about. And he was kind. He was a kind dude. I, I, I can't explain it. He was the real deal. He really, really was, man. As down to earth as anybody. But that being said, 
Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. I do want to share an evening with Ronnie. I'm going to tell you a little story. But before I do, I have to share this with you. Singers are a trip. Okay? Singers are a trip. And I've recorded more vocal tracks than I care to remember. Some were great. You know, some singers know what they're doing. They come to a session prepared. And things are easy. And they're fun. And they're cool. And then you have the singer that can sing a little bit, right? But, <laughs> well, let's just say that today you have auto-tune and pro tools. <laughs> it's a different kind of party today. And singers depend on that kind of stuff. You know, it was different back in the in the days of old when all you had was a microphone and a tape machine. All right? So I'll leave it at that. A vocal track. Today can take days. It can take weeks. But it never takes a week day. It never does. But not with Ronnie. No. Dude was a professional. A total professional. Unbelievably prepared. Let me explain. I'm going to tell you the story this evening with Ronnie. One night, I was invited uh, down to Total Access Studios um, in Redondo Beach, California. Famous place, great place. Been there many, many, many times. The owner, Wynn Davis, is is uh, one of the most talented guys uh, in the industry, period, bar none. And so many hits and, and great albums uh, came out of uh, Total Access. And, and I had a working relationship for many, many years with Wynn. Um, but anyway... So, um, you know, I, I go down and Ronnie and the band were there. This is like 2000, you know, 2001. And Ronnie and the band were in the studio uh, recording tracks for the album Killing the Dragon. And it was with Jimmy Bain, uh, Doug Aldrich and Simon Wright on drums uh, with Wynn Davis, uh, by the way, engineering. And so I get to the studio and I walk in and and every we're all friends. This is a family situation, right? Of course, you know Dougie and Jimmy and 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 Ronnie and 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 Win. I've known just as long as everybody else, right? So it's a family thing and it's all good. And I pull in and we're saying hello and and when you walked in the door there, uh, you walk into this little lobby. This is a working studio, by the way. This is where you go to work. But there was a little. Um, a big studio, massive, beautiful place, but um, uh, it wasn't all cushy cush like some other studios, right? But they had this little area uh, with the TV when you first walk in, and the NBA playoffs were on, and I, and I won't forget that because I walked in and and Ronnie is is watching the playoffs, and uh, and I said, "Wow, okay," and he goes, "Man, you know," and um. Uh, It doesn't matter. I don't want to. But what it did show me at that point, which I had talked about before, but I didn't realize Ronnie was a sports guy and he loved his NBA, loved his basketball, especially New York basketball was third. And all the players, coaches, this, that history, you know, trades, you know, he fully engaged in into basketball. So we sit down and start watching the playoffs. Now, this is the thing. They are recording an album, right? The clock is ticking, right? (laughs) Bills are being paid. But we sit and we watch the playoffs. Doug Aldrich comes in and he goes, dude, man, you got to see the guitar setup. So I get up and I walk into the studio and I'm looking at the amps and Ashdown and some stuff that I had loaned Doug and and things and it was all there. And we go go through and do that. Now, there's a reason for this uh, long lead up. So then I walk back through. Ronnie is still there watching the playoffs. And I walk through the control room. Ronnie gets up, comes with me, and he grabs me by my arm. And he goes, you got to see the uh, vocal booth, man. I said, okay. And we walk through the control room into the vocal booth. And this was the Ronnie James studio setup. I want you to picture this in your brain. He had a... a I don't know what you call it, uh, like a pulpit thing that preachers have at a church, right? <laughs> and it's sitting there, right? And with the vocal microphone coming off of it, a Neumann, right, U87 or U47 or whatever, coming off of this thing, 
and 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 then opened up looks like a bible but it's not is his is his lyrics that it's all handwritten out right it's three ring binder and that's sitting there the lights are off and all around us in this big room with the with the glass you know going into the studio in front of us the ledge you can see this on the uh, bunker cam the ledge for the glass window are candles right and they're end to end i i don't know 20 30 40 candles they're all lit and uh very cool and and these candles were all over the place right candles 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 room is dark lit up with candlelight and this pulpit thing whatever you call what a preacher speaks at it's there <laughs> i think it was stolen from a church man it looked like it came out of a church but it had a, a microphone stand built on it with this neumann microphone and i'm like man what a vibe right so anyway we walk out and ronnie uh ronnie comes in and i walk over and and uh watching the nba ronnie comes up to me and he goes uh you want to eat dinner with us? I said, yeah. What do you want? Thai food? And I said, yeah, Thai food sounds good. Okay, Thai food. And he points to one of the assistants. And he said, Thai food for everybody. Just order everything. Ronnie goes, I got to cut some vocal tracks. And when I'm done, we'll eat. That's what he said. And he walks in to cut this song. And this is all singers listen to me right now. Ronnie goes in and, and I hear Ronnie go, okay, roll tape. And... I'm sitting out there with uh, Jimmy Bain, Doug Aldrich, NBA is on TV. They're watching NBA. I'm listening to Ronnie. The studio door is open. And Ronnie goes, okay, just want to go through and cut cut lead vocals. Let's just lay that down. Then I'll go back and do harmonies. That's what he says. Now, I've heard many singers say this, but he says that to win. He goes through. Song is four minutes long, right? Whatever. Five minutes, four minutes. Ronnie cuts the vocal track in one take and but this is how he did it he goes through he does the verse he does it he goes play it back played it back never overdubbed okay that's good okay let's go to the next verse boom cuts it let's play it back listens and i'm like what the heck goes to the choruses and he goes okay when finishes the song like 10 minutes goes back and says okay we're gonna do harmonies and I'm listening, and I'm like, what kind of sing? And they were perfect vocal, perfect, right? And he goes back, and this is what I'm saying. He comes prepared. This is work. He's not there to have fun. He's not there to goof off. He's not there to have ego. He's not there to impress. He's not there to frustrate people or run an engineer. No, he's there to get the vocals done on this song. Goes back and 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 he does a, a harmony vocal to his lead vocal, doubles it, and you know, gets to the chorus and goes, uh, okay, when uh, let, let's go through. I'm going to do the first harmony. Goes through harmony, done, done. Goes through. It goes, okay, bring it back. I'm going to do another harmony. Comes back, does the second harmony vocal to to that vocal. It goes, okay, let's go to the next chorus. Does the same thing. Gets to the end of the song. What you know, another thing. Another doubles the choruses. And goes, okay, let's hear it back. And I'm sitting out there going, that took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and he is done with harmonies. They're watching the basketball game. I'm listening to Ronnie. And uh, uh, he plays the song back, and I'm, I'm sitting back, and I'm listening, and it's perfect. It sounds like the album that you hear in the car. But it's done, done, done. And it gets to the end, and Ronnie steps up right three feet from me at the door and goes, uh, how'd that sound? And I go, dude, are you done? And he goes, yeah, man, we got to eat Thai food. Is it here? And, and the assistant comes in and said, Thai food's here. And he goes, okay, let's go. And Ronnie grabs me, and we walk back. Uh, with uh, We're all holding bags of Thai food. <laughs> we walk to the back of the studio. I am stunned. I can't believe it went down like that. So we go in. <clears throat> we sit down at this table. And we're handing out food, and everybody's – and I am just staring at Ronnie 
thinking to myself, kids today, if they were only here, anybody that thinks they're a lead singer and thinks that they have to do, you know, it, you come prepared. If a, if a kid was there today uh, with us, you know, 20, 21 years old, and he thinks he's the greatest singer in the world, and he may be. And he sat and watched how Ronnie did that. Ronnie doesn't didn't come in thinking he knew what he was going to do and take a couple of cracks at it. And he's got his ideas. This stuff was through pre-production, written, done, practiced. And now they're here to cut vocal tracks and get the song done to move on to the next song to get the album released for his fans. He's not there to create or frustrate or or be a, a lead singer. It, he's a, he was a working man, and it was one of the most impressive things. And and I I just got to tell you, I sat there at dinner. Everybody is talking about the NBA, including Ronnie, and or 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 just things. And I'm just sitting there thinking that was the greatest vocal performance. I have ever heard. And this is what I want to leave you with. That was just one track on that album. One track of all of the albums that Ronnie has ever done. And that's it. It's for me, it, it was life changing. And for Ronnie, it was just another day at the office. And that's my one of the evenings with Ronnie James Dio. Ronnie, um, I hope uh, right now you're listening to me tell this story because you know exactly how that went down that night and you know how stunned and happy you made me. You were a good dude. And uh, there you go. That's my Ronnie James Dio story. Let's get out of here because I got to get to Corey Good. All right. Seven years ago today, Ronnie James Dio left this earth. He was one of the greatest, one of the best, one of the kindest, one of the coolest. There you go. I got many more stories, but not enough time. I got to get to Corey Good. This is Fade Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Corey Good. Tomorrow night's Fader Night. Don't forget. All right? I got to get out of here. I'll be right back. to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. KGRA Radio. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of Fade to Black... You create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the Fade to Black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of Fade to Black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights. Just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Go Beckley Tepe. Hi folks, let's wind the clocks back 60 years. Food was different. Food provided health and nutrition and using supplements was minimal. Unfortunately, now we have chemicals, GMOs, herbicides, and pesticides that can be quite lethal in the name of our food supply and, of course, the ever-loving dollar. Supplementing our diets can be very important to stay healthy. Cleansing from daily intruders to the body might be critical. Live strong and take charge. Log on to GetTheTea.com. Our herbal tea is a great way to cleanse from intruders. Our supplements is a great way to maintain and improve your health. 
When your health is not up to par, go to GetTheTea.com. No GMOs, no fillers, and organic. And very helpful in keeping you at the top of your game. Life is too short to feel, uh, you know what I mean. Stay in the game, at the top of your game, with GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Again, GetTheTea.com. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Chase Kletsky with Fate Magazine Radio, and you're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA digital broadcast station, where the Fader Knots rock. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This Mass is Kyle Mass, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. <laughs> Welcome back, Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I was just checking out over on Twitter. We need an evening of uh, Jimmy stories <laughs> from Brent. I- I'm going to tell you, Rita just saw that tweet. And I- I'm going to say this. <laughs> Nothing scares her more than a tweet like that. She-, she just rolls her eyes and like, I've heard this story so many times. I just can't do it again. All right. <laughs> hey Rita, what do you say? A night of Jimmy's stories. I think she just broke some stuff down the hall. I I, I already hear it happening. All right, let's do this. Corey Goods with us tonight, and uh, yes, whistleblower, contactee, activist, author, and founder of the Full Disclosure Project, a collective of transparency advocates focused on the release of advanced and improperly classified technologies. These technologies could immediately bring an end to the needless suffering of many, as well as an increased level of peace, prosperity, and equality for the people around the world. Corey is creating collaborative efforts between various artists, activists, and business professionals who will be producing and distributing media projects on this subject, including documentaries, feature films, shorts, animated films, commercials, music, and print. Corey was also recruited through one of the MyLab programs at the young age of six, uh, good trained and served in the program from 1976 to 1986 and 87. Currently, Corey serves as a delegate for the Non-Terrestrial Sphere Being Alliance and has been tasked as a a harbinger of their message. Now, the message is, every day, focus on becoming more service to others. Focus on being more loving. Focus on being forgiving of yourself and others. This will change the very vibration of this planet Think about that. The shared consciousness of humanity and change humanity one person at a time is what he is doing. The website, of course, is Sphere Being Alliance. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, Corey Good. Corey, good evening, my friend. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You're here in Los Angeles, man, right now. I am. <laughs> yes, I've uh, been here a couple of days. And I've been uh, preparing to uh, uh, talk to uh, a comic book publisher and uh, work at, and talk to a few other people about some projects. How's Hollywood treating you? It's pretty crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so far so good, though. I, I like your laugh. Uh, most people, you know, you hear about Hollywood in the films and the movies and whatever that that have never been here, but you experience Hollywood and 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 look at the tourists and what is really going on, you know, uh, down in Hollywood these days, and it is it's insane. It's an absolute insane, trippy thing to go and experience. Is this your first time in Hollywood? It is. I, I don't think uh, I, I was brought in the area 
when I was a teenager by my parents, but I don't think we hit Hollywood. Yeah, well, back then, you wouldn't have hit Hollywood. The only reason to go to Hollywood back then would, would uh, you know what, I, I don't want to list the reasons for going, but you would probably end the evening being robbed. Okay, so, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, today it's pretty gentrified down there. So, uh, but welcome to Hollywood, and uh, uh, we're get, getting ready to gear up uh, to contact in the desert, and so let's talk about that for just a second. Um, you're going to be doing a few different presentations out there. What are you going to be talking about this year? Well, I guess the main presentation I'm going to um, do is going to be on the 22 different genetic programs that the non rules have been perfor- performing on humans of Earth since, you know, 500,000 years ago, 400,000 years ago. We're going to cover the... the um, the cosmic duality aspect of, you know, they're actually, you know, being a, uh, you know, as below, so above, we'll do the opposite, that, you know, there is duality out there. Um, then we're going to be covering, um, um, we're going to be showing some new footage of William Tompkins and I uh, together for the first time. I got to meet him in San Diego about a month ago. Right. So that was very interesting, and we're going to be announcing a uh, a book project that we're working on. And the book project will be announced out at Contact in the Desert, everyone. So, uh, and get ready for that announcement. And uh, well, we kind of just did it on this show, but but that announcement. Well, the it's a it's a collaboration of uh, a number of. Uh, interesting people. So it'll be fun. Yes. I've seen the list and uh, I have to say everybody that is going to be a, a pretty interesting publication uh, when that comes out and that announcement will be a contact in the desert. Um, what else are you going to be talking about? Well, let's see <clears throat> that we're, that's going to be mainly what we're talking about. Um, we're, we're going to do the two genetic pro- uh, uh, programs, the 22 genetic programs, talk and then uh, we're going to do some show and tell of some projects that we're doing do some meet and greets and uh, you know that that kind of thing I, I don't have it really outlined in front of me for what exactly i'm talking about the other two talks and uh out at contact for you uh this is uh i guess officially this is your second time uh doing contact but it, it is a large crowd of people um, and they are there to, to, you know, literally hang on your every word too, as well. Does that help you get through presentations? And because it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially when you're dealing with, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people. It is overwhelming. Um, yeah, this will actually be my first year of contact. Last year, I, I sat up, uh, on stage with David, Wilcock and answered a couple questions, but I didn't really give a presentation. Uh, this will be the first year that I present at Contact. Right, right. Hey, Corey, if you could uh, help me out here and speak uh, loudly into your phone. Don't let it wander. Just stay okay. right on that, baby. Stay right on that, baby. Okay. Um, uh, the The documentaries and the comic books – and the media and some of these things that uh, uh, that you're talking about doing and collaborating on suggest to a lot of uh, uh, well, I don't know if the word's a lot, but but to a few out there that this is purely a money making venture. And uh, is it just that? Why do documentaries and feature films and 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 all of these other things? Uh, what's the intention there? To be honest, I really don't know how much money these documentaries and you know really actually make. Um, there's a, <clears throat> I've been educated recently about you know how little money books make, you know, and and other different media. So a lot of people think that if you're doing these different types of media, you're bringing in all this money. That's not necessarily the case. But the main reason that we're doing this is to try to find a way to get this message that you eloquently read, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the blue avian message, but also to start trying to plant seeds in the greater um, shared consciousness to where 
we can um, begin to plant seeds about disclosure, about the different types of technology that are out there. And we've got a number of projects that we're working on that will give us avenues into the mainstream through, you know, graphic novels, um, through the video game genre. Uh, so <clears throat> we have, you know, a number of ways to try to get the message out. And, you know, we do want it, want this to be a successful business as well. You know, we, uh, you know, I'm not apologetic for, uh, you know, uh, having a, a business that, you know, will turn a profit at the same time while we're disseminating information to the mass consciousness. The um, uh, the other part of it, when we talk about unity in the community, um, and you and I had uh, have spoken about this very subject quite a bit um, off air, and it is part of the the non unity is where I'm going right. That is part of what this community has been experiencing for so long. The uh, the the infighting that is happening. It, it's just it to me. It's just crazy, and I've never really quite experienced anything like it. But as you move forward, you will you know you continue to see that. There is uh, those that are positive and those that are negative towards not only you, but to anybody that's out there in this community. And part of that is that has divergent information. It it, it is it it is it is fascinating to watch this happen. And you see this in real time. Did you expect this kind of divide um, and and stuff that 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 happens in this community and is happening to you right now? Did you expect this? Did you know this this was coming? Even though I warned you and others, right? But oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, I was definitely prepared for it. I knew it was coming. And in the beginning, <clears throat> when people would pop up here and there, usually it's small little you know noisy minorities that will pop up with a different uh, theory. Um, and uh, if I ignore them, they just kind of go away usually uh, but the, the, there's a couple aspects to this you know we have everyone we're, you know we're trying to figure out what's going on so we're using our experiences and uh, the information that we've been able to gather to try to figure it out and inadvertently we form our own little belief systems or you know not really UFO religions but our own ideologies and then we try to validate them through information that's out there. So, you know, we, we, we divide ourselves uh, to a certain extent by, you know, our different belief systems. But at the same time, we do have agents, you know, of the powers that be that come in and, and do instigate divide and conquer tactics because they do not want this community coming together the way that uh, a lot of people would like to see it come together. The uh, the past and the history in ufology uh, has had its serious, tragic moments. And uh, without going into specifics of years past, but some of the craziest things have gone down. And every time that I see it happen, I often wonder, was this something that was forced? Was this something that uh, uh, was uh, possibly... Uh, disinfo was a government related was it not and a lot of these turned out to be just that that there were instigators out there uh, that got caught that had infiltrated this community and are trying to stir things up on purpose and this is not imagination this is not crazy conspiracy paranoia talk i'm talking about reality of, of some real situations do you feel that um, it is just that, that it's done on purpose? It's not the fans. It's not uh, the people that want knowledge and that maybe question what you're saying, but that this is something direct to uh, to bring you down. Well, you know, it's not only to, to bring me down. You know, that's, that's a little bit paranoid, but, uh, you know, there are certain people that have personality conflicts with me or, or I violated their belief systems. There's any number of different reasons why they've chosen to take a stance against me. But there is the aspect of infiltrators into this community, ufology, and that uh, 
that are definitely sowing seeds of division. And uh, I experienced that when I tried to form, um, you know, the full disclosure project in the beginning. Uh, there were certain individuals that started calling everyone that I was working with, trying to get them to stop, you know, working with each other. It, it's not so much about trying to bring me down as they do not want this community unified. It would be too powerful. If the community came together and started doing, you know, mass demonstrations on uh, disclosure of you know, hidden technologies. <clears throat> if we all got together and started coming up with plans on how to uh, do social media campaigns and, and, and other different uh, techniques of trying to get disclosure out, because we are going to be disclosure. Disclosure is not going to occur, you know, by any certain president walking up to a podium and making an announcement. Right, right. Uh, no, I don't think any of us can expect that. Um, now, there have been, uh, I, I, I don't want to name names uh, I've, for, for any reason, but uh, because I have confidentiality uh, with, with people that I have conversations with. But some of it I have shared with you, and you do know that there are some researchers and some authors out there that have confided in me and asked me questions specifically about you and how I felt about you. And those researchers, which will turn out to surprise a lot of people here in the next, uh, in the coming days and months, and we're going to talk about that in, in just a bit, that have now come to you and said, okay, you know what? Let's work together. And is that the unity in, in the community that you're looking for? And how does that make you feel where you have some of these uh, great researchers out there that maybe questioned you, but now they understand that we just need to cooperate and 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 join hands and do this together because we're much stronger that way. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of researchers were, you know, quite honestly, uh, kicking back and watching to see if I was going to be a flash in the pan, right? And to, to see if the information would hold up over time and if I would be consistent. And um, as I have been consistent, they have began to approach me, ask me questions. Some of them have gone through their own vetting process with me. Uh, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been interesting to see. You know, a lot of people think that certain uh, researchers uh, are you know against me just by what you would see posted out there by people we're not going to mention. Right. But it's I'm starting to work with these people now. So. Um, it, it is. They don't want the unity between the, the researchers, but they mainly don't want re, uh, the, the, the major community um, at large. They do not want them unifying and uh, you know coming together and, and having uh, singular goals uh, of trying to to reach disclosure. Well, the thing that I have found interesting is this: um, I have interviewed everybody. Okay. I've, I've literally, I've done a thousand interviews and what I have been able to do for this audience and for you is to present every single point of view, every piece of evidence it's, a lot of it contradicts each other. A lot of it doesn't make sense and they don't necessarily connect the dots. But what I have always done with everybody, including yourself, is give everybody a platform to speak, right? To get your ideas out there. And this audience from day to day to day to day, hears conflicting stuff, right? <laughs> from the day before and then the next day. And it's the same thing with you, but the platform has always been there for each one of these researchers, no matter what, if the evidence is conflicting or not. And, and it's not up to me to, to um to question anybody that comes onto this show it just doesn't it doesn't it wouldn't work for this community if we did it that way nobody would want to come on to this show if that's what was going to happen and 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 for you as we start to move this forward that's exactly the frame of mind where you are at that you need to try to get out there to this community right yeah yeah, yeah. I totally agree. And the um, and uh, I, again, uh, Corey, I'm going to ask you: speak loudly into the phone. Speak loudly. Remember, I have. Sorry, I had to, 
Yeah, I, I just have... had to take a drink of water. I'm starting <laughs> to lose my voice a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot to talk about. But and so for you, is that the goal um, with these projects to get these uh, researchers and authors together that will surprise people that that have never collectively maybe even gotten together be- before to present out um, in a unified front? Yes, I mean, if we can get, I mean, even if a lot of our information doesn't mesh, you know, totally, if, as long as we can agree that none of us have, you know, the answers right now, we all want the answers, then, you know, we can stop debating what our little differences are and start to focus on getting those answers. That's, you know, that's the whole goal. And uh, there are a lot of researchers that if they started to work together and collaborate instead of, you know, having everyone's, you know, I, this is my information, I've got to keep it separate from everyone else's information, um, and they guard their little areas, you know, and and they stay in their little area of expertise. If we can all start branching out and working together, we can start to give people also, <clears throat> if you bring these people together, they're going to get a broader spectrum of information. You know, if we can get these people together at conferences, uh, get them together working on different documentaries, there's, you know, there's a, a lot of information that we can get disseminated. The, uh, the one of the announcements that I wanted to do, so let's uh, let's do that now before the break is you are going to be having a conference in August up at Mount Shasta. Tell us about that. <clears throat> yes, um, it's going to be Eclipse of Disclosure. Um, the, the Eclipse of Disclosure is going to be uh, in Mount Shasta, August 18th through the 21st during um, the Eclipse. And um, so far, we don't have, uh, we can't uh, announce a lot of the uh, speakers that we're, we're talking to. We're getting all that worked out right now. But um, we are selling early bird tickets at uh, eclipseofdisclosure.brownpapertickets.com. Um, okay, so, I've, I, yeah, I've got the link here. Uh, where, where's the event going to be at? It's um, actually going to be in Weeds, uh, which is just uh, outside of Mount Shasta at a college campus. We're going to have, um, I think, 550 seats, and we're also going to be live streaming it as well. So we'll be uh, putting up a, a website here in the next uh, 20 days or so that will have the speakers that have agreed to speak, as well as um, you know the streaming video information okay i've got the uh, link up now and you've only got so many limited uh a limited amount of early bird tickets that uh, that are available but right now there are still some available right yes there are um, we've sold i think about 35 so far so yeah we've, we've still got uh, a fair number but uh those will no longer be on sale at that price once we uh, uh, launch our uh, website. Yeah, yeah, we get that. You don't sound like too much of a, a businessman right now. <laughs> <There's> other, <laughs> and what's funny about yes, uh, yeah, we totally understand that concept. The early bird tickets are up and available. Um, I will be uh, the MC at this conference, everybody, so uh, we can announce that. And I'm very, very excited about that to, uh, to do, do that up at Shasta at this college. But um, what speakers at this point can you confirm? Uh, the, the speakers that were at Mount Shasta last year when I spoke, uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Sala is going to, to be there. We're going to have uh, Laura Eisenhower there. Of course, I'll be speaking there. And uh, there are a few others. We're just waiting for confirmations right now. Uh, what about Bill Tompkins? Bill Tompkins, I don't know if he'll be able to make it or not. We'll, we'll have to see. That's um, he, He's spoken about Mount, Mount Shasta in the past, and it seems to be a place that uh, he wouldn't mind going. So we'll, we'll see what we can work out. That's definitely a person that we would like to have. Now, this is during the eclipse, so there's going to be some eclipse ceremonies, too, as well. I can only imagine how cool that's going to be at Shasta. How many days is the event itself? Well, it's it's going to be for the, the three days. We're going to have not only the speaking event, but we're going to have, uh, you know, off-site 
events, like, you know, we were talking about the different ceremonies for the eclipse, and um, we're, we're going to be uh, possibly having so, uh, some sort of a street fair uh, working with different food vendors as well. Okay. Again, Corey, you got to stay on the mic. See, I feel like you're... I'm on the mic. It's, it's my voice. It's my weak voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny. I feel I, like... I've spent the, I've spent the day uh, talking to a lot of people, so my, my voice is kind of fading in and out. Okay, well, I'm just I'm just letting you know we have very expensive audio gear here, so all of this uh, gets amplified, right? So the a- anyway, I feel like your big brother coaching you and writing you about this, but I have to because the audience is listening to this too as well. Um, uh, uh, the the uh, one of the stated goals of this, the unity in the community at this conference. Um, is the, is this the right time to do it? I mean, it, it is a big push. It is a big move. It will be a big conference. Uh, a lot is to be expected. But is 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 this the right time for this? Well, it, it has to be right now. All of the starseed type people are being activated. I have never seen a time when there are more starseeds that are excited activated and ready to get on mission. And a friend of mine, uh, Bridget Nielsen, said that at this point, we're not really star seeds, we're star blossoms. And I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of people that have blossomed and are, are ready to get out and fulfill their mission. So why not get organized? Why not come together and uh, you know, focus on this mission together? Let's take a break right here, Corey. Uh, When we come back, we're going to continue this conversation about unity in the community and uh, some other stuff. Obviously, Corey has always got breaking news on something, and we'll be uh, jumping into that. I've got some more questions. So do you. Post everything up at hashtag F2BQ in Twitter, or you can shoot me an email, jimmy at jimmychurchradio.com. Our guest tonight, Corey Good. I'll be right back. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Hello, I'm Katie, and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, this is Ray Hobbs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church. Fade to black on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. Well, the <laughs> just... <laughs> We are also Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. What's up, Fader Knots? Studio Dumb loves Fade to Black and the F2B audience so much that they have put together the ultimate stereo Bluetooth system. They've done it just for you. Man, check this out. The Studio Dome SBB2 Stereo System is here. It's featuring two Studio Boombox 2 SBB2 wireless Bluetooth speakers packed in its own custom hard shell case. This Studio Dome system features the very latest in stereo Bluetooth technology. The two full range boomboxes are in true wireless stereo. You've got to hear this. It's amazing. It's just 129 bucks, and use the promo code JCRTWS, and you'll also get free shipping. It's simple. Just go to JimmyChurchRadio.com, click on the Studio Dome banner. Go Beckley. 